Hello everyone, my name is André Bailon and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Sao Paulo and I'm going to talk about the hidden and forgotten Cerrado plants in the modern urban landscapes of Sao Paulo, Brazil. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting us and for putting together this amazing event. I would also like to thank the graduate program in social anthropology at the University of Sao Paulo and CAPES for funding and supporting my research. I'm going to take you in a short journey through the bushy, low-lying, sometimes dry and thorny, but colorful and diverse weeds, herbs and grasses of an urban cerrado. Before I move forward, I think it's important to clarify what the cerrado means. This word was originally an adjective meaning dense or enclosed in Portuguese, referring to the dense grasslands, scrublands and bushes dotted with tortuous trees found in central Brazil. When capitalized, Cerrado is a broad term given since the end of the 19th century to a vast ecoregion encompassing a diverse mosaic of vegetation types, from open grasslands to woodlands in the Brazilian highlands, where summers are rainy and winters very dry. It is sometimes translated as the Brazilian savanna. It originally comprised over a fifth of the Brazilian territory, being the second largest ecoregion after the Amazon, but today is one of Brazil's most devastated and least protected landscapes after the expansion of cities, roads, soybean, corn, sugarcane production, cattle raising, and mining from the 18th century onwards, especially in the last few decades. The Cerrado is normally not depicted in common representations of Brazilian tropical nature, from images and movies to landscape art exhibitions and catalogues, although that has been changing in the past few decades. Often it's not also not part of major international national conservation and research efforts, as most attention and funding goes to its lusher cousin, the Amazon rainforest. This type of cultural silencing takes place in many forms. For example, the metropolitan region of Sao Paulo, where I live, officially lies in the Atlantic rainforest biome, but the area has been historically dotted with patches of Cerrado. Many people from Sao Paulo, when confronted with the idea of the Cerrado, don't imagine it as part of their surroundings, but usually think of the vast expanses of central Brazil, like those around the national capital, Brasilia, as in those pictures you just saw. So I'm going to take you virtually through one of these low-lying, tiny Cerrado landscapes of Sao Paulo, but one that has been intentionally worked by Daniel Caballero, a visual land artist from Sao Paulo, who is the main character of the story, alongside the urban landscapes that he has been exploring, studying, caring for, and planting since June 2015, with the help of friends and neighbors in a path called Cerrado Infinito, or Infinite Cerrado, right in the middle of the metropolis. This garden path or trail is located in the Sumara district, in the affluent western zone, in a small city park that was already famous among local activists and environmentalists, when he first came up with the idea. Famous for being the land of the drizzle, Sao Paulo lies in a mountainous valley and once had a dense and rich network of rivers, which are now either heavily polluted or have been almost entirely covered by the ur urban sprawl. At the end of 2013, the city started to suffer from a long drought that lasted two years. Temperatures hit record highs, season after season, rainfall hit their lowest levels, and the metropolitan water reservoirs started to dry up. Following a series of mismanagements by the local, state and federal governments and the water and sanitation agencies, this resulted in a severe water crisis that affected the whole metropolitan region. So looking for the hidden networks of streams and waterways in a drying city became a hot topic of debate and action among the organized civil society. One famous project was the Praça da Nascente, or River Source City Park, an unofficial name given by local activists who dug up a few sources of the River Agua Preta, or Black Water Creek, 
completely underground since the 1950s, setting some of these sources free and releasing their water into a pond that they carved at the bottom of this park. They began filling it with water plants, tadpoles, and fishes, which eat mosquito larvae, something essential after the recent surge of diseases carried by them, such as dengue fever, Zika, and chikungunya. At the same time, the project, the visual artist Daniel Caballero was working with drawings, installations, and plants on urban nature. Living close to the park and knowing some of the people involved, they joined efforts and in June 2015 started to plant a small living path on a hill of the same park, filling it with cerrado grasses and weeds that Daniel was collecting for an installation that he put up in a museum and an art gallery. The chosen path for receiving these plants was up to that point covered by a bed of invasive, monotonous, non-native grasses which dominate most urban parks in the city. The path was named Cerrado Infinito, Infinite Cerrado, as homage to the dying biome, and it's still maintained by Daniel and his friends, and of course, the wind, birds, beetles, ants, wasps, and butterflies. And it's constantly visited by school and university classes. The chosen hill faces north, which makes it sunlit year-round in the southern hemisphere. It has a red clay soil filled with tiny rocks and some boulders. And away from the shadow of the bigger trees and the darker fertile ground in the area around the pond downhill, this was a perfect spot for an open savanna landscape. Now, those traces indicate possible past ecologies. A trail has been dug up and has been constantly growing with Cerrado plants he collects around the city. There has been a lot of work to fend off the encroaching invasive grasses with their strong dominating roots. He also designs and inserts signs with drawings of plants and accompanying botanical information with QR codes redirecting people to the project's website where he documents the whole thing. I was attracted to it as, at the same time, I had just started my PhD project to research the scientific and cultural histories of the Cerrado in travel writing, science reporting, and iconography in the 19th and 20th centuries. So a landscape artistic experiment with Cerrado plants right in my own city felt something worth following. I was interested in the interplay of human and more than human aspects in the creation, transformation, and imagination of landscapes, stimulated by recent debates on the Anthropocene by the environmental humanities. This particular debate stresses how the ruined landscapes in which most of us now live in are haunted by a multitude of ghosts, traces, and vestiges of more than human stories and materials. There's a feeling of strangeness related to it that I think it might be hard to grasp if you're not from here. Why plant a Cerrado path in Sao Paulo? For many people from here, it seems a little bit out of place. For those of you in the UK, it could be similar to, for example, planting a moor landscape right in the middle of London. To answer this, we have to go back to his background. Daniel designed it after a series of explorations around the metropolitan area trying to explore what nature and landscape could mean and be in this 20 million people megacity. Walking around, he discovered that there was a whole world of hidden urban ecologies in the most marginalized spaces, abandoned and vacant lots, urban wastelands and brownfields that in Portuguese are called terrenos baldios, close to what might be familiar to you, the French term terrain vague. These terrain vagues, despite the common negative features associated with them, emptied, abandoned, derelict, dead, wasted, are filled with possibilities. Urban explorers and researchers all across the world have been paying attention to these spaces, seeing what seems at first empty lands filled with things and life forms. As the British nature writer Richard Maybe has once said, 
It is not the parks, but railway sidings that are thick with flowers. According to geographer Matthew Gandhi, for centuries, as our modern and industrial cities expanded, there, have, there has been a minor interest in spontaneous and wild urban nature, including the publication of studies and guides describing botanical species of walls, ruins, and roads. Despite this type of urban vegetation, mostly weeds, being considered marginal or useless for the utilitarian attitude and modes of inhabiting our cities. With some research and the help of a few biologists and colleagues and a lot of reading, Daniel found out that many plants he saw at these urban wastelands were typical of the Cerrado, including some rare species. These traces together with the toponymy of the city, showed that patches of savanna and grasslands have always been part of the region, but have been silenced and erased from official discourse and memory. The city itself had campus, a word in Portuguese meaning open fields, in its first name, given by the religious Jesuit group who founded it almost 500 years ago, in the 16th century over the stolen land of the Guarani people who still inhabit the outskirts of the city. So, offering a counter-mapping of the city's landscapes and contradicting official classifications, he and other people actively imagine a São Paulo that was probably a mosaic of tropical rainforests existing side by side with the Cerrado, which included anthropogenic open fields created with fire by indigenous populations and later European and African settlers and their descendants, which historical travel reports also indicate. The complex biome is long gone, of course, but the Cerrado plants remain, haunting these ruined urban wastelands. Dan Danielle finds these tiny weeds, herbs, and dry grasses surviving in places where no one mows them and where there aren't many shadows covering them and the soil is not too fertile. This haunting presence offers other possible stories. The trail provides an ever-changing experience, different from an established design park or garden. Year after year, different plants are planted here Many of them die out, some arrive by wind, or by birds and pollinators. On my field notes, every time I visited, I remarked how different it looked, with different colors, some plants thriving and some gone away. Sometimes it feels very chaotic and lush, especially after a period of heavy rainfall, but even in a dry winter, like in this video, it is filled with flowers. Other non-human companions are also brought back, as different cerrado plants take root in the path, their flowers attract many different animals and their fruits serve as food to birds and ants. Contrasting with the green deserts of invasive grasses that are almost sterile in terms of the possibilities they offer to the local fauna. Visiting it at different seasons provide different sensorial experiences as well, while tropical rainforests have been historically compared to a sort of internal spring, always lush and green. The Cerrado is typical of the Brazilian highlands where there is a sharp contrast between the wet and the dry seasons. Walking through it, we can feel, see, smell and touch a changing variety of colors and textures as some of them dry out in the winter, leaving behind uh, thorny trunks and some have textured leaves well adapted to the long dry spells which are becoming more and more common in the city, deeply affected by a changing climate. Different landscapes provoke different types of engagements and sensibilities. Documenting this is hard, it's, uh, this path, you know, its openness under the stark tropical sunlight and the cloudless sky makes it difficult to register the subtle contrasts, contrasts between different plants. In person, these weedy, grassy patches lower our, our sight and our bodies, inviting them towards the ground. Different from the canonical tropical landscape art, individual arts and gardening, which, with important exceptions of course, rely usually on broad, ample views and the presence of exuberant trees, you know, very tall, 
A cerrado path involves another kind of attention, one that is more creeping, closer to the ground, demanding a slow, detailed interaction. Gardens offer a similar type of engagement, of course, but the most common gardens, um, with their collection of domesticated or semi-domesticated flowers and bushes, normally selected for their color, their pleasant um, sensorial experiences they offer, feels different from this chaotic, messy, untended, unrestrained weeds of the Cerrado. The Cerrado path also generates other types of feelings. There are some vernacular imaginations and classifications towards landscapes and nature in Brazil, which require a little bit of information. The contrast between two very similar words that share a common um, origin in Portuguese, uh, mata and mato, Although sometimes used interchangeably, the first is the feminine, a mata, more commonly used for forests and dense woodlands, as in the tropical Atlantic coastal rainforest, Mata Atlântica, that is still survives in small patches in the city as well. The, mus the masculine counterpart, o mato, has more complex meanings, from broad landscapes to singular plants or group of plants. In comparison to the denser mata, Mato usually means a smaller woodlands, bush, bushes, or scrublands. The expression meio do mato, for example, is used when something or someone is located or lost in the middle of a sparsely occupied area, covered by vegetation, similar to how bush is used in Australia. It can often be a derogatory term when a plant or a group of plants are considered useless or ugly similar to how overgrowth or weed are used in English. Uh, this difference between mata and mato is striking and present in ordinary attitudes towards nature in Brazil, including urban nature. The denser mata and its trees are the objects of strict environmental protection. Tree cutting and pruning require public authorization, risking heavy fines if done without one, even though frequently disrespected, of course. Meanwhile, the low-lying mato is left to its own fate, and it's constantly mowed by public uh, park employees. It's important to notice that the Cerrado is not even mentioned in the federal constitution as subject to a spe particular special type of environmental protection as the Amazon or the Atlantic rainforest. You know, it's protected because it is inside a few areas, um, like indigenous reservations and national and state parks throughout central Brazil. This is important in order to understand common reactions towards the project among neighbors, passers-by, and public works and park staff. Since I first started to visit it, I have heard from different people referring to the project as a chaotic plethora of weeds, many times complaining and using the common expressions. This is just weeds, isso é mato, or Esse monte de mato, this bunch of weeds, an expression of disgust used when looking at an, at an overgrowth in an abandoned lot or urban wasteland, for example. So replicate, replicating in a very small scale the common contrast found in Brazil more generally. Daniel has a motto summarizing his whole project. He wishes to plant mato in people's mind, other than only in the path itself. Thus, caring for it is not just about searching for plants and replanting them here and dialoguing with biologists, but also negotiating with other people, especially the, the people who work for the parks staff, so that they don't mow the delicate cerrado plants, mistaking them for plain grass. Um, to convince them, he resorts to memory. Forgotten stories are then brought back from the places these people some of these people grew up in, especially if they are migrants from, from other parts of Brazil, recollecting how their families use these plants as edible plants, natural remedies, cough syrups, teas, jams, and several types of domestic instruments, brooms, emery papers, and boards, as well as stuffing for scarecrows and dolls. All of this is mostly forgotten by urban dwellers, but not by the oldest of, of neighbors. Mentioning plain grass, plain grass is also an important actor with which tense negotiations have to take place, constantly. Grass is of course not a single species, but in the hybrid post-colonial landscapes of Brazil, especially in the urban areas, 
there's a collection of foreign invasive grasses, very aggressive. Um, many of them brought from Africa with cattle and people. Their strong roots suffocate other plants and grow exceptionally fast in hot, wet summer days. Uh, you can see them in the right side of this picture. And the left side is the Cejado plants. The haunting and residual aspects of the surviving plants is one of the main topics Caballero wishes to discuss with his living land art. If every patch of urban Cerrado in Sao Paulo is a residual ghost, this project could be read as a living cenotaph for me. You know, as, a, as the Cerrado is dangerous disappearing in most of Brazil, at the same time as the Amazon rainforest is turning into a degraded type of monotonous savanna. Although the project sometimes feels very nativist, nativist, with its constant activity of fighting off invasive grasses, um, on a closer look, there's an important point to be made on the social imaginaries and memories of urban landscapes. Almost all governmental, private, and NGO conservation efforts in the city focus, focus on tropical rainforests, mainly trees or only a few garden plants. Looking at the marginal Cerrado plants in disturbed landscapes and urban wastelands complicates a dichotomy between native versus foreign when native is only one type of landscape, you know, rainforest. Following Edward Said's commentary on Simon Schema's important work, Landscape and Memory, if memories are contested, produced by a complex, tense and ever-changing relation between selecting and forgetting, for every celebrated forest, woodland, grove, and garden, there are so many forgotten, hidden, and trampled over patches of dunes, meadows, savannas, swamps, hybrid and disturbed mosaics of human and more than human elements. And the ghost, ghost mattos of, Brazil, of urban Brazil remind us of this complicated past and haunted presence.